Get ready to have your mind blown as we count down 20 strange things that only exist in Ghana. From quirky customs to mind-bending landmarks, we're about to dive into a world that'll make you say, wait, what? Let's get started. Fantasy Coffins. Kicking off our list at number 20, we've got something that'll make you rethink your final send-off. In Ghana, particularly among the gay people, funerals aren't just somber affairs. They're a chance to go out in style. Enter the world of fantasy coffins. Imagine being laid to rest in a giant fish, a bottle of beer, or even a Mercedes Benz. These elaborate custom-made coffins reflect the deceased's profession or passions. A fisherman might get a fish-shaped coffin while a pilot could soar into the afterlife in a plane-shaped one. It's a uniquely Ghanaian way of celebrating life, even in death. Speaking of unique rides, let's shift gears to number 19, the Tro Tro. These aren't your average public buses. Tro Tros are like the wild cousins of minivans, decked out in vibrant colors and often sporting hilarious slogans. They're the lifeblood of Ghana's public transport system, cramming in more people than you'd think possible. But here's the kicker. Each Tro Tro has a mate who hangs out the side, shouting destinations and collecting fares. <laughs> Fuck up! This guy is crazy. Ondangwa? <laughs> Ondangwa? It's organized chaos at its finest and an experience you won't find anywhere else. At number 18, we've got something that'll make your eyes pop. Kente cloth. Sure, other cultures have traditional textiles, but kente is in a league of its own. This isn't just fabric. It's wearable art with a rich history. Each pattern and color combination tells a story. As I see my uncle dressed in this kente cloth, if you are a typical Ghanaian, it tells me where he's going. He's going to a funeral or he's going to a meeting that is related to somebody, funeral preparation and others. So every occasion demands what you are. Now all the designs are speaking to the general public. Representing proverbs, historical events, or even mathematical concepts. Originally worn by Ashanti royalty, Kente has become a symbol of African pride worldwide. But the real magic? The traditional way it's hand-woven, creating intricate patterns that'll make your head spin. Coming in at 17, we've got a workout and a meal prep all in one. Fufu pounding. Fufu, a staple food in Ghana, isn't just mixed, it's pounded into submission. Picture this, a giant wooden mortar and pestle, two people working in perfect sync, pounding boiled cassava and plantains into a smooth, dough-like consistency. It's a rhythmic dance that requires skill, strength, and timing. Miss a beat, and you might end up with a sore hand or a face full of fufu. It's dinner in a show, Ghanaian style. Number 16 takes us to a landmark that's both a beacon and a paradox, the Jamestown Lighthouse in Accra. Standing tall since 1871, this lighthouse isn't just a navigation aid, it's a time machine. Climb to the top and you'll find yourself straddling two worlds. On one side, the vast Atlantic Ocean stretches to the horizon. On the other, a maze of tin-roofed houses and narrow alleys showcases the vibrant chaos of Old Accra. It's a mind-bending juxtaposition of past and present, all from one vantage point. At number 15, we've got something that'll make you prick up your ears, the whistling language of the Nzima people. While whistling languages exist in a few places worldwide, Ghana's version is uniquely theirs. In the Western region, some Nzima communities communicate complex messages through intricate whistles. It's not just simple signals. We're talking full conversations, gossip, and even love declarations, all without uttering a word. Imagine a whole village conversation happening in whistles. It's like Twitter for the ears. Swinging into number 14, we've got a forest experience that'll have your heart in your throat. The Kakam National Park Canopy Walkway. This isn't your average nature walk. Picture seven bridges suspended 30 meters above the forest floor, stretching for 350 meters through the treetops. As you wobble your way across, you're eye to eye with exotic birds and maybe a shy monkey or two. It's the closest you'll get to feeling like Tarzan without the loincloth and vine swinging skills. Lucky number 13 brings us to something straight out of a fantasy novel, 
the Larabanga Mystic Stone. Legend has it that this stone, located near the famous Larabanga Mosque, has a mind of its own. Allegedly, whenever it's removed or relocated, it mysteriously returns to its original spot. Is it magic, supernatural forces, or just a really stubborn rock? Whatever the case, it's become a symbol of the area's rich folklore and a must-see for mystery lovers. At number 12, we've got a greeting that's more than meets the eye, the Ghanaian handshake. Forget your basic pump and release. This is a multi-step process that'll leave you wondering if you've just completed a secret handshake or a mini dance routine. It starts normal enough, but then there's a finger snap, sometimes a fist bump, and variations depending on the region. Master this, and you'll feel like a local in no time. Just be prepared for some awkward moments while you're learning. Halfway through our countdown at number 11, we encounter a place that's as haunting as it is historically significant, the dungeons of Cape Coast Castle. This fortress, one of about 40 slave castles built on the Gold Coast of West Africa, holds a dark secret beneath its whitewashed exterior. The dungeons where countless enslaved Africans were held before being shipped across the Atlantic stand as a grim reminder of human cruelty, but it's the stark contrast between the beautiful coastal views above and the horrifying conditions below that makes this place uniquely chilling. Cracking into our top 10, we've got a shopping experience that'll make your local mall look like a corner store, Kumasi Central Market. This isn't just a market, it's a city within a city. Spread over 12 hectares with around 10,000 stalls, it's one of the largest markets in West Africa. Getting lost here isn't just possible, it's practically guaranteed. From traditional kente cloth to modern electronics, if it exists, you can probably find it here. Just be prepared for a sensory overload of sights, sounds, and smells unlike anything you've experienced before. At number nine, we're taking a detour to a village that seems to float on water. In Zulazu, perched on stilts over Lake Tadane, this entire village goes about its daily life above the water. Legend has it that the village was led here by a snail spirit, which let's be honest, is probably the coolest origin story ever. Accessible only by canoe, visiting Nzulezu feels like stepping into another world. One where streets are waterways and your neighbors are quite literally a splash away. Coming in at number eight, we've got a beach day with a twist, Bojo Beach. This isn't your typical stroll from the parking lot to the sand. To reach this slice of paradise, you've got to hop on a wooden boat and cross a lagoon. It's like a mini adventure before your beach adventure. The short boat ride not only adds to the excitement, but also helps keep the beach pristine and less crowded. It's a beach and a boat ride, two for the price of one. Lucky number seven brings us to a vantage point that'll give you a new perspective on shopping. The rooftop of Kajadia Market in Kumasi. Recently renovated, this market is a marvel of organized chaos. But the real treat? Head to the rooftop, and you're greeted with a sea of corrugated iron stretching as far as the eye can see. It's a metallic ocean dotted with satellite dishes and the occasional plume of smoke from food stalls below. It's the kind of view that makes you realize just how massive and bustling this market really is. Swinging into number six, we've got some furry friends that are more than just cute faces. The sacred monkeys of Boabang Fiema. In this monkey sanctuary, Mona and Calabas monkeys aren't just protected, they're revered. Legend has it that these monkeys are the children of the gods, and harming them is strictly taboo. The result? Monkeys that are surprisingly chill around humans, often wandering through the village like they own the place. As we enter our top five, we're circling back to the theme of unique send-offs with the coffin shops of Teshi. Remember those fantasy coffins we mentioned earlier? Well, in Teshi, you can watch them being made. These workshops are more like art galleries, showcasing coffins shaped like everything from lobsters to Coca-Cola bottles. It's a strangely life-affirming experience, watching craftsmen turn the idea of death into a celebration of life. Just try not to think too hard about why that coffin is shaped like a giant mobile phone. At number four, we've got a natural wonder that doubles as an international border, the Biele Waterfalls. As the highest waterfall in West Africa, Mili is impressive enough on its own. But here's the kicker. The left side of the falls is in Ghana, while the right side tumbles down into Togo. 
It's probably the most refreshing border crossing you'll ever experience. Just resist the urge to skip across the rocks to the other side. Border Patrol might not appreciate your adventurous spirit. Breaking into our top three, we have a place that's as historically significant as it is eerie. The Salaga Slave Market. Once the largest slave market in Ghana, today it stands as a somber reminder of a dark past. What makes it uniquely haunting is the well where enslaved people were washed before being sold. The well still stands, surrounded by ancient baobab trees that witness centuries of human suffering. It's a powerful, if uncomfortable, glimpse into a history that shaped not just Ghana, but the entire world. Just missing the top spot, at number two, we have something that sounds like it's straight out of a fantasy novel, The Singing Wells of Nausea. In the northern region, during the dry season, locals dig deep wells to access groundwater. But these aren't your average wells. As people descend into them to fetch water, they sing. The wells amplify their voices, creating a hauntingly beautiful echo that can be heard from far away. It's a perfect blend of necessity and artistry, turning a daily chore into a musical performance. And finally, at number one, we have a lake that's quite literally out of this world, Lake Bosumtui. This isn't just any lake, it's Ghana's only natural lake, formed by a meteorite impact over a million years ago. Surrounded by lush forests and traditional Ashanti villages, it's a place where science meets mythology. Local legends say the lake is sacred, with spirits living in its depths. Whether you're drawn by the geology, the legends, or just the stunning views, Lake Basum Tue is a fitting finale to our countdown of Ghana's strangest and most wonderful sights. And there you have it, folks. 20 strange things that only exist in Ghana. From otherworldly landscapes to unique cultural practices, Ghana is a country full of surprises. Whether you're planning a visit or just armchair traveling, I hope this list has piqued your curiosity about this amazing country. Remember, these are just a few of the wonders Ghana has to offer. The real magic lies in experiencing them for yourself. Until next time, keep exploring and don't be afraid to embrace the strange and wonderful things our world has to offer.